Hello and welcome to our first presentation on AS Biology EMPA Task 2, in particular AQA. Um, same 10 marks every year, 4 marks on table and calculating a mean, and 6 marks on a graph, almost always a line graph. What we're going to do is look at some examples and mark schemes, and just make sure that when you get back after these two, you can get the 10 marks quite easily in this section. So just some key ideas which you need to be really aware of, even though they got banged into you at GCSE, uh, to make sure that you can um, construct your tables and graphs correctly. So the independent variable is the thing that you are changing in the experiment. So for example, I changed, that's the independent variable. Whereas the dependent variable is the thing that you are measuring. It depends on the thing I have changed. So make that clear, let's look at an example from May 2010. The um, practical was the effect of pH on the rate of breakdown of lactose by lactase at 30 degrees. What happened was, we started with basically some milk, and every minute you'd look at it to see where it had gone clear. Um, temperature was kept at 30 degrees, and the water baths, sorry, in, in the solutions, in the test tubes, there's different buffers at different pHs. And as I say, every minute you saw where the colour had changed, from col two colours from white. So the independent variable thing, the thing I changed in this experiment, was pH. The dependent variable, well, you might think it was the breakdown of lactose, but the dependent variable is the thing you're measuring. It depends on the pH. And the thing I was actually measuring was how long it took for the colour to change to colourless. Okay, so it's the time taken for the colour change. The control variable, thing I'm controlling, keeping the same. In this case, it was temperature degree at 30 degrees. So, constructing a table is either worth three or four marks, depending whether it requires you to calculate a mean. Same mark scheme, previous mark scheme, always the same. Clear table, go to your mark. The independent variables in the first or most left column. A clear description of variables in the headings, and I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that, so it's really an easy mark that people drop. And the units are in the headings and never in the body of the table. And again, we'll look at some examples. So, the first mark point. The data is clearly presented with full descriptions of independent and dependent variables. So back to our example of pH and colour change. Independent variable, always in the top left hand column. Dependent variable is here. I'm doing three repeats and an average at the end. Clear, full description. So pH is not a full description. pH of what? pH of solution. Concentration of milk, not just concentration. And time taken, right, is, is that a full description or time taken for an elephant to cross the road? Time taken for solution to go clear or colourless. And my units are in the heading, minutes up the top there. Not in the body of the table, but in the heading. Okay, in this case, there's also a fourth mark for the points following a trend. Okay, so you can see on the left hand side, my pH is a solution. There was no reaction, it never went from white to clear. So rather than putting zero, which would actually suggest it happened after no minutes, never happened very quickly, I've written no reaction. So there isn't a reaction, don't put zero, but no reaction. You'll see there, as we'd expect, the pH gets to 6.5, towards an optimum pH. Um, the time's less, down to seven even quicker, it rises again. Okay, so key points again, mark scheme, make sure you can get these points. Clear table, independent variables in the first column, clear descriptions of the variables in the headings, and the units are in the headings and never in the table. And in this case, we also have to calculate a mean for a mark. Very easy, how to calculate a mean. Three repeats, repeat one, plus repeat two, plus repeat three. So you're going to do three repeats, and then divide it by three. Okay, and if it's make sure your answer doesn't have more than one significant figure from the data you put in. So in the instance here, the results might have been 5, 4 and 5. I add those together to 14, and divide it by 3, and give me an answer of 4.666 reoccurring. A good rule of thumb, never more than one significant figure. Okay, give me one decimal place. 5.0, 4.0, 5.0, 4.7 .0 would be just one extra significant figure. In this case, I think so the same number of significant figures wouldn't be accurate enough because it would be 5. Okay. So here it is, this is my final table, and it's going to be four marks. It's clear, independent variable in the top left-hand corner, units in the heading, and it follows the trend, and a mean is calculated. Now, construction of a graph is always worth six marks. 
Key points again from previous mark schemes. Data is plotted in the correct style of graph. The independent variable is on the x-axis. The dependent variable is on the y-axis. The scaling is correct, which is a common mistake that even some of my most able AS students make. Points are plotted accurately, and the points are joined with a curve of best fit or ruled lines. And I'll really stress this importance of ruled lines is never wrong. It's never wrong. So, which way to put my axis? Well, the thing I change, my independent variable is on the bottom of the x-axis. My dependent variable, the thing I'm measuring, is there on the y-axis. It depends on what I'm changing. So in this case, the thing I was changing was pH of solution. And the thing which I was measuring was time taken for solution to go clear. But I need a unit. I always put units there. pH doesn't have a unit. So therefore, it doesn't. But it, could, it did have a unit too. It would be on the bottom there. There's no, I know some teachers get a bit obsessed and in the mark schemes and it talks about obviously you have a slash minutes for units and not brackets. Brackets are allowed. You do get a mark if you put your units in brackets. In terms of scaling, okay, what I've got here is you'll notice down here at the bottom, okay, at this point here, I've started at five. Okay, I've not had to start at zero. There's no need. My first pH, which I changed, was five. So I've just started at five there. Some people try and do clever things with zeros and little hashy lines to try and show it's breaking up scale. No need at all. Just start at 5, 6, 7 and 8. And if you remember, this is a mistake even my most stable A star students make bizarrely, okay, my um, variables were 5, 6, 6.5, 7 and 8. But I've not given 6.5 its own point here. So some people for some reason put 5, 6, 6.5, 7 and then 8. That's not a scale. Like on a ruler, six and a half centimetres would be equally between six and seven. And the same along here on my y-axis. I've started at two because that's my lowest number. Three, four, five. I've looked at it. So just that point on scaling again. It is a common mistake. So do take your time. This isn't against the clock in the exam. You've got all day if you want. So just remember scaling. Okay. As I just put a little arrow there. Okay. Because at pH five, remember I got no result. No result, not zero, because that express it really happened quickly. So for no result, I've not plotted a point on my graph. I've just left it plain there. And just to show you again, okay, that point there for accurately plotted. That's why a plus sign is always better than a cross, because the plus sign shows that the line could go across here to a five, and then down here to the six. And even if you want to make them really accurate, you can just get a large ruler, 30 centimeter ruler, okay, and just put it along that piece of the graph paper and draw a little line where they match up. Okay, So that's my graph there, points plotted accurately. Now I've drawn a line of dot to dot. Some pupils are obsessed with doing curve of best fit or line of best fit. However, at any point it could always be a guess. For instance, here this line could go, if I was going to do a curve of best fit, down to here and then up again. It could go down to here and up again. I don't know, so I'll be guessing. There's never ever been a mark scheme where a dot to dot has been marked wrong. So if you're not sure, or you're 50-50, or even if you're only 99% sure, just do a dot to dot, because it's very rarely wrong. Or it hasn't been wrong before. Okay. Also, another point here, where I finished my line here, I've not guessed what it would be. Like I don't guess for the line of best fit, I've also not guessed here that the point would go on in the same. Okay, so I just leave it as it is. I don't extrapolate or extend the line. Okay, so here's my marks. I've chosen a line graph because it's continuous variables. They've always been so far line graphs, and it is again this year. Um, I've done a scale there, labelled my axes, put my units on there, uh, got my scale correct as I said, and done the correct line uh, of dot to dot and plotted my points accurately. So there's my six marks. Just to refresh you again. Data is plotted in the correct style of graph. Independent variables on the x-axis. Dependent variables on the y-axis. The scaling is correct. My points are plotted accurately. My points join with a curve of best fit or ruled lines. Always ruled lines. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side, if you click this link on this image here, okay, that should take you to this little summary note, which hopefully shows the pictures that you've seen there. Okay, this might not quite be working uh, when this first goes up because I need to get the privileges from YouTube to do it. Also, I've written a book again, working as a, a marker and moderator for AQA, uh, maybe for your A2M for next year, and in particular the statistics part, which uh, many students have uh, 
class problems with. So that's been the views for you. So it's the first one I've downloaded, so hopefully it's gone okay. And um, please leave some comments if you've um, got any uh, suggestions. Okay, thank you for watching.